This presentation is going to be on an interesting um, subject called hyperfocal distance. This is something that used to be really important and used a lot in the days when most lenses were mechanical and did not have the auto exposure or electronic focusing and all of those kind of modern things. But it's still applicable. So let's take a quick look at it and see what we can do. First of all, in order to make sense of it, we need to review some of the terms and concepts from our depth of field presentations. The focal distance, if you recall, is the distance from the image plane, which is sometimes also called a film plane or the sensor plane of your camera. It's the distance from the image plane to the plane of critical focus, which usually is at the main subject of your shot. Many times you're going to see this focal distance simply referred to as the camera to subject distance. But they really, if they were being specific, it would be from the image plane to the plane of critical focus. Now here's something that a lot of people don't understand. On each lens on the footage scale, there's an infinity mark. What infinity for a lens means in the optical world is that if that point in the distance is in focus or is within the depth of field, then everything beyond it, everything farther from the camera, will also be in focus. And on most camera footage scales, infinity is indicated with the symbol for infinity, which looks like a number eight laying on its side. It's also important that you remember that depth of field is the area from somewhere in front of the subject. That means somewhere between the camera and the point of critical focus. Two, somewhere behind the subject, meaning farther away from the camera than the subject is, that is going to appear to be in focus or acceptably sharp, even though in a technical sense, the only point that really is in focus is at the plane of critical focus. And you remember why that is with the eye's inability to discriminate detail smaller than a 200th of an inch and all of that. Well, another interesting point about depth of field is that it extends about one-third in front of the subject, meaning toward the camera, and two-thirds behind the subject, away from the camera. And now, here's the really important part regarding hyperfocal distance. The rear edge of the depth of field is critical here. If it falls into the area that is at or beyond the infinity point on your lens, then everything from the leading edge of the depth of field to the infinity point and beyond is going to look like it's in focus in your shot. So let me illustrate this. Let's go back to this illustration we used back in our depth of field issues. And you remember this. These are your important parts. The focal distance, that distance from the image plane to the critical focus or the subject. In this case, that point of critical focus is the gray line down through the little bear. And the depth of field area here shown extending a third toward the camera, two-thirds behind it. Hopefully, you already know this. And it would be kind of wise if you didn't to go back and review that because it's likely to be on a test somewhere down the line. Just saying. But let's add some terms and a new illustration for you. First, let's take a look at the lens footage scale. This is going to be on the lens barrel itself. In most of our modern electronic focus, it's under a little window. You don't see the entire scale. You only see what's showing through the window. But it will have on it the distances, both in feet and meters, but we'll use feet here, from the point of closest focus for the lens to the infinity point and beyond. That infinity symbol is indicating the infinity point for that particular lens. Just note, if your lens doesn't look like this, it probably won't. This is just an example. All lenses are going to be different, depending on the focal length, depending on the brand, depending on the model, 
they're going to be laid out a little differently and the different footage um, distances are going to be different for each lens. Now remember from the depth of field presentation that if the focal distance is increased, the depth of field will also be increased. So if we push the plane of critical focus back a little, so from here, from that last illustration, it was at about 35 feet. Now it's about not quite at 40 feet in this illustration. You'll notice that the depth of field has increased a little. If the far edge of the depth of field reaches the infinity point, as it does here, then everything beyond will appear sharp. So that specific focal distance that allows the rear edge of the depth of field to be at the lens's infinity point creates the maximum, maximum depth of field that you can get with that lens set at that aperture. A different aperture would give you greater depth of field, but each aperture on a lens has its own hyperfocal distance. When it's set, so that that rear edge of depth of field hits the infinity point, it then becomes known as the hyperfocal distance for that lens and that aperture. So what? All this is fascinating. But is there any real use to it? Well, it turns out, yes, there is, because it allows the photographer to achieve the maximum depth of field for a given lens and aperture. And why would you care about that? Well, if you're an event photographer and you're now forced to try to focus and refocus as things happen, it's no longer necessary. If all of the action happens somewhere between the leading edge of the depth of field to infinity, which is quite a ways out there, then you don't have to focus again at all. Concentrate on shooting. Everything is gonna look sharp in your image. It also works for landscape photographers. It helps them to pick the lens and aperture setting that's going to achieve whatever their desired depth of field is without worrying about focusing in more detail. Sometimes the point of focus, the hyperfocal distance, is at a place where there isn't anything in the field out there for an autofocus camera to focus on. You just have to know how to make it work. So it allows a proper focus and depth of field when there isn't anything out there to focus on. To give you an example, here's another type of lens indicator. An older 250 millimeter has a bled lens. In this case, the center arrow, the little black arrow in the center is now pointing to the aperture, which is F16. And in this case, for this lens, a 5.6 lens, F16 is right in the sweet spot for this lens. And you'll notice it's focused at about 70 feet. Being a 250 millimeter lens designed for a two and a quarter camera, this is going to look a little different than a 250 millimeter lens for your 35 millimeter based camera. But the concept is exactly the same. Here, instead of having little markers that you have to correlate to apertures, this lens actually has moving markers that as the lens is refocused, those little red markers move. And where they line up with the footage scale indicates where your depth of field is. So here, the red markers indicate the depth of field runs from oh, somewhere around 55 feet to a little over 100 feet. But what if we push that point of focus, that focal distance out a little further from the camera? Now, we've increased the focal distance to just under 200 feet, but it's still set to f16. But you'll notice something has changed. The rear edge of the depth of field has increased to the infinity point. So now, this lens will allow us to shoot everything from about 80 feet to infinity and beyond and have that appear acceptably sharp in the final image. Many modern lenses, your electronic focus lenses, they don't even bother showing the depth of field markers anymore. They're going to assume that the photographer is simply going to be using the autofocus function because they don't expect you to do anything 
other than use auto everything in your camera, even though it's turning an expensive DSLR into just a heavy point-and-shoot camera. So they don't even bother putting that stuff on it. But what if in order to achieve that depth of field effect you want, there's nothing to use as a point on which to focus. If you understand depth of field, hyperfocal distance, and the lens markers, all of that can solve your problem. But what if there are none on your lens? What if you've got one of these new modern lenses and there's no indication for it? Well, there are tables that you can find online that you could print out, or if you had a smartphone and you're within a Wi-Fi uh, connection, you can look up. And here's a good one with good illustrations, depthoffieldmaster.com. Here's the URL. I'd suggest you write this down and take a look at it. There's also an incredible number of available apps for smartphones and tablets. You can download these, have them handy whenever you need them, so you can just look it up on the spot. So that's what hyperfocal distance is. And now I guess the only thing left is, do you have any questions?